my name is David Ben and in this video I'm going to show you this brand new feature that allows you to have different sheet views in Excel or filter views. So what that means is that let's say I am co-authoring a document, so editing a document at the same time as someone else. One view of it can be like this on the right and the other view of it in Excel online can be like this on the left. Now this these features work with either online or desktop. As you can see, when I click here, it shows me that that's being edited by this person here. And when I click on a cell, it can also show me that that, per that, that cell is being edited by the other person there. So I am co-authoring a document with myself here. Um, and Sheet View has been around in Excel online for a while, but it's just come to Excel desktop. If you have Office 365 and you're not seeing it quite yet, it's going to be coming soon, depending on whether you're on the monthly cycle, the insider cycle, the, the biannual cycle, etc. So I'm going to show you how this works in both Excel and in Google Sheets, uh, because they're pretty similar. In fact, I'm pretty sure Excel just stole the user interface directly from Google Sheets. So um, let's start with Excel. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to go back to the normal view. So I'm going to go to default there. Now, as you can imagine with default, this is what we're used to doing. So the issue here is that any sorting or filtering that I do here, let me clear my filters. Notice the pop-up that's trying to warn you against doing that. Now, how's that different from the normal view? The normal view with sorting and filtering means that whatever happens in one happens in the other, which is not always what you're looking for. So in this case, if I sort this A to Z, and let's say I filter for only a couple, as you can see, this one then follows suit very shortly afterwards. And in this one, I could then just clear the filters and then that sort of feeds the same here. However, this filter view, sheet view, allows you to stop that. So let me just maximize the screen in Excel desktop. And you have this new thing in the view tab on the far left. So first I'm going to go to new. And what that does is it puts black backgrounds around here. And that means that it's a temporary view, which I can see here. I can rename this to whatever I want, but first let me apply some parameters. So let me filter this to only be a little bit of data there. And then let me sort this from smallest to largest. And now I'm going to rename this to uh, filtered cases sorted by case per tests. This is, by the way, coronavirus data that's being linked live to the Worldometer's site. So I have called it that, and let me uh, now go to another one. And so now I'm going to clear my filters from this and just create another one. So this one's going to be sorted Z to A, and this one's going to be just filtered, say, bottom 10%, like that. So this second view is now going to be saved and I'm going to say bottom 10% by case per tests, like that. So now I have two, as you would imagine, and I also have defaults or I can rename a view as I want to. If I, if I also want, I can go to options and I can go to all of these like this there. Rename a view is one that I made earlier. I, I'm going to delete that. And this one, if I want to, I can say duplicate it and then switch to that view. And in that view, it's going to be slightly different. There's going to be another filter here. And of course, I'm going to rename that to have two filters. Then if I go to uh, this one, so here I'm in the default view and I have the two, the three that I added, I can go to them there. And then I can switch and have different ones going, depending which platform I'm on, depending which user I am. So you can navigate it here in the same way the options are here. So you can add the same options as you go along. 
press exit and you go back to the normal. You might also notice on desktop, it shows you this eye icon and that means that you are in this sheet view. So that's how it works in Excel. Let's look at Google Sheets. So here I have the same sort of interface where I have the black to indicate I am in this filter view, but uh, I have different ways of renaming it and editing it slightly. So I'm going to go back to scratch and show you how to make these. So I'm going to here just clear my filters. So I'm going to go to data, filter views and none. And that goes back to these being sort of white. And this one I'm going to do the same thing. Data, filter views and none like that. And now this is working sort of as you'd expect. So if I have a filter here and I just click on one date, then that does affect both of the tables there. Now, uh, if I want to get this to start, so I'm going to clear my filter, select all. And then in this one, I'm going to add a filter view. I'm going to create a new one. And now I can just sort of say filter this to be only the ones that are there. By the way, Google Sheets has checkboxes, which is really, really awesome. Uh, there's a lot of things that Google does better than Excel for now. But as you can see, it's showing you this one on this side, but this one's showing me the normal view. And then I can here give it a name. So this is D is ticked. I can also do the sorting option here. So I can change this to sort the other way around. And then I can change the name there. And then on this one, if I go to data filter views, I can see that this is showing me there. Now, let me make another one. So I'm going to go on this side and go to uh, actually add the filters first. So let's just tick all the weekdays. And then I'm going to go to data filter views and say save as filter view. And let's call this weekdays. So again, it works for sorting and filtering options. It doesn't work with things like hiding or grouping. I kind of wish it did because that's a nice feature, but yeah, it works as it is. In Google Sheets, you can change the range there and you can edit it here. So rename, update range, duplicate or delete, similar to what you can do in Excel. Uh, to exit out of it, you click there and then you go back to the normal view and then each one influences each other. So now if I go to data and turn off filter, then that will affect it on this side as well. Another little bonus, if you are going to use Google Sheets for co-authoring, I love this feature. So you can right click any cell and choose show edit history. And then it just has this. So you can keep going back and see all the edits that are done. This edit was copied from the original document, what was added, who did it, what date and time, and then keep scrolling for all of them there. Here I replaced 22 with 25. Isn't that really awesome? Excel doesn't even come close to this level of tracking. All right, so that's it for this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe because I have tons more content about Google Sheets, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, Zoom, all kinds of technology. Thanks for watching.